the reason why the coronavirus was on my radar so early on in December of last year is because we have some incredible public health experts. This was brought to their attention. And especially in San Francisco, we have over 30% uh, Asian population and many of our Chinese population still have ties to their family members in China and in Wuhan in particular. I mean, that was enough to sound the alarm for me. So although we had no cases confirmed at the time, we got out there and we were clear with the public. It's not whether or not we're going to have a case. We are going to have a case. In navigating in the 1980s, the HIV AIDS crisis, we were ba basically completely ignored by the federal government. We were on our own. Sadly, we anticipated that that might be the case in any other public health challenge. And it, it happened in this particular case. This is a time when you do what's necessary in order to support the country. What you're seeing is mayors and governors all over the U.S. collaborating with, with each other, we're sharing with each other, we're supporting one another, because it doesn't help our country if only San Francisco is doing well. We all need to be doing well. We all need coordination, and that should involve the leadership of our president. Mayor Breed, what gave you the strength and fortitude to stand up to people who were questioning your decisions? It probably has a lot to do with growing up in the projects in a community where you had to fight all the time. My grandmother raised me, and no matter what was going on, I knew that we were going to be okay. And as mayor, I had to make sure that people knew that we were going to be okay. i rather people come back and say, well, the mayor overreacted and everybody's okay. This pandemic is really exacerbating the disparities that have already existed in communities around healthcare, around income inequality. San Francisco already had a, a very uh, challenging situation to begin with. Our, our, our homeless population is really a very complex one. We have a number of people who suffer from substance use disorder and mental illness and we made it a point to focus on getting them out of shelters and into hotel rooms so that we can prevent the spread in our congregate living settings like our shelter system. Social workers, the nurses, the nonprofit agencies, the staffing, the 24-hour care with three meals a day, cleaning and everything else. I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. We've been able to move faster than any other city in our state, but it's still tough. What lessons in leadership do you think you've learned from all this? It's important to listen to the experts, really relying on the people who understand this the most, people who know what they're doing and could help guide me in making good policy decisions or good financial decisions, good health decisions. From the beginning of this pandemic, when we announced that we would declare a state of emergency, although there were a lot of people who were not in agreement, they did appreciate the fact that we explained that. And I think that's what you have to be every step of way. You have to be open, you have to be honest, you have to be clear, you have to provide the facts and the data. And you explain to people why and you provide them with facts, even if they don't agree with it, they appreciate it. 